hi guys and welcome back to styling the centuries so this video is a bit different as it is part one of a mini series i'm going to be doing where i'm creating an 1890s bridal corset from scratch using the pattern drafting techniques from mandy barrington's books stays in corsets i'm going to be trying to my best to tell you exactly what i'm doing as i'm doing it but obviously i can't explain everything as you would have to buy mandy's books for the exact details all of the materials i got to make this pattern were bought from amazon except the paper and i will be leaving a link to the books and equipment in the description box Right, so today is actually the first day of me attempting to make the corset. I'm kind of scared. So my first step is to make the female block. And as I might have said in the introduction, I am using Mandy Barrington's Stays and Corsets. In front of me I have volume one, which is here. Volume two. And then I also have a corset book by Jill Salen. I was actually really lucky and I got to speak to Mandy Warrington and she suggested that I buy the Jill Salem one as well because that has some patterns from the 1920s actually a little bit before but it's more near the time that I wanted to look at specifically. I'm going to start with Mandy's book for the kind of first corset that I'm making because I have never made a corset before. I have done commercial patterns but that's very different from making your own pattern from the block. So my first step is actually to make my female block pattern. So to do this, I need to take my measurements and then I need to put them into the little table that Mandy has actually put at the start of her book. And then from there, I then decide what pattern, what corset pattern I'm going to make. So Mandy suggested that for a beginner, there's two patterns in here which could work. So there is either the 1890 bridal corset Or there is a silk brocade corset there. I haven't decided which one I'm going to make yet because I want to do my female block first and then decide which after that I think probably looks the easiest to be honest. So the materials that I've got is firstly a big roll of paper. So the second thing I have are, it's really nice, it, there's hair stuck to the sellotape. Mm -hmm ignore that. Um, I have these French curve pattern kind of rulers. These I got from Amazon. They were relatively inexpensive. I also have this big ruler, big measuring tape rather, and it has centimetres on one side and inches on the other. You're definitely going to need this for taking your measurements for your female block. Other than that, you're going to need a normal ruler and a very sharp pencil because the most important thing about this is apparently the accuracy. And I'm not very accurate when I'm doing commercial patterns, so we're going to see how this goes. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my measurements and then fill it in in Mandy's table that she's put the bit that the front rather of both of her books. So I'm going to fill that in right now. Okay, I just wanted to show you guys the basic female block that I was talking about. So when you've measured yourself and you've kind of put it onto your paper, which should, you know, look something like that, then when you sew it together, that's the female block. And that's kind of what you base all of your patterns off of when you make historical outfits. Right, so as I've just said, although quite ramblingly, is that once you have taken your measurements, you have to use them to make your female block pattern. The block pattern is the basic form of your body from which you can adapt patterns from to make more interesting clothing shapes. So when clothes are made from, for example, H&M, each style of clothing is cut from an industry standard block pattern made for each standard body size. However, as you've probably experienced, often the clothing doesn't quite fit. And that, Divya, is because your body's unique. Your bod is a snowflake. And so the only real way to make your clothing fit exactly is to make this female block. So, for instance, when I was measuring myself and then comparing my measurements to the standard female measurements as printed in the book, I found that my body shape was actually all over the place, which initially made me think I'd done the measurements all wrong, which actually I had. But after about four attempts at making my measurements and then getting my mum and sister to help, I finally came to the conclusion that I had measured my nape to waist measurement now so many times that it could not possibly be wrong. 
so I didn't actually record myself taking my measurements for my female block but just for some context the key measurements you need to work out are your bust, waist, hip, mid hip, waist to hip, neck, across the chest and back and then you need to have a calculator as for many of these steps you will need to be halving, quartering, making these measurements into thirds, fifths, you, you get the idea. And the key here is accuracy. You need to be super duper accurate when taking on measurements, but also even when translating them onto your female block pattern. Even such a small detail as your pencil being a little blunt can mean that your whole pattern is thrown off because your pencil line, say, is two millimeters wide instead of one. So again, accuracy. Okay, so as you can see here, I actually had to tape my paper together as I didn't have a single roll that was wide enough. You want to kind of get one that's like one meter wide. So this actually worked out fine in the end, but I made the mistake of not cutting it accurately to begin with. And so I ended up having to draft the rectangle within which the female block goes twice. This was so annoying and I don't have any footage because I wanted to kind of delete it from my memory. Honestly, making the block is quite a tedious process as you've got to concentrate quite hard, like you can't really have a YouTube video or even really music in the background because you need to concentrate, at least that was my experience, maybe I'm just a bit dim. And then even when you have tried really hard, things still go wrong. Yay! <laughs> So then this is my finished female block. So when you've made the block, you have your center back on the left side with the length of the bottom being around half the bust measurement. And then your center front line is there on the right side and then your body shape fits back and front in the middle. When you have drafted out your female block, the next thing to do is to trace the block onto some huge pieces of tracing paper and then trace it again onto another piece of paper. You need to do this so that you always have that original block, the prototype for all your future patterns. Then once you have traced out the block again, you can begin marking out your historical pattern. In the end, I actually went for the 1890 bridal corset as I thought that was the prettiest. Also, I know at the beginning of this video, I had said that the bridal corset was the easiest, but when I actually read back through the how to use this book section of Corsets it and Stays, I realized that it was the actually the 1890 black corset that was recommended for beginners. So, oops, but um, hopefully it's gonna turn out fine. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> So this is what my newly traced block looked like once I had finished it. I was then to begin drafting my 1890 corset using the block as a guideline. So some of the elements of the block don't need to be transferred onto this new historical pattern. For example, when making the corset, I didn't need to transfer the bust darts because my corset didn't need darts. You also need to ensure that the paper you are using is big enough because you will need to make a gap of at least 30 centimeters between the front bodice piece and the back. This particular corset pattern is made up of six panel pieces with a spoon bust closure at the centre front and then a more typical lace up back. To make the panel pieces all exactly the right size and shape, I had to use the provider table and then use my measurements to mark up exactly how big each one should be. As you can see when I was drawing out my corset pattern I used a colour coding system to help me work out which panel I was working on and yes I did draw directly onto the book, I was just giving it some character. So there it is, the final drawn out pattern. Once you've created it you must actually trace it out once more and then copy this traced outline onto another piece of paper. This is so that if you ever need to make any adjustments to your original you won't have to cut it out completely. When transferring your pattern to the fabric, you should also remember to transfer the waistline so that you can make sure you can have that drawn on and also ensure that you have added all the seam allowances and voila! In the next video, I will be sewing up my mock-up version of the corset which is super important to make sure you've done all the sizing correctly. Thank you so much for watching, until next time, bye!